and this thing won't let you in until. All virtual. Zoom. Okay. Nobody's on here yet, but we're supposed to be able to. Well, you know, we never started right on the dot. Let's see. Yeah, I think I can put this thing up here. This has been a uh, this has been a learning process. So there's a uh, Enrique and uh, what was her name? Uh, Edith. There's so it's different people because we. It's, um, there are 23 of y'all that are supposed to be okay, in the but, class, but nobody mm -hmm. like you and all of my original amigos, y'all just dropped me like hot cake. Just really? um, the, 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 This class is for the little tree? Okay. Uh, I don't know. I remember the number of the others. Yeah. You had a few new ones that were coming that came on, and then uh, Edgar. Oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Where he's Edgar, um, yeah. Mario, Angie, Angie, Angie. What she came. Angie? She came the week before. Okay. So, and the nice thing about this is, if I have to be out, I could actually record this ahead of time. Mm -hmm. There's just no interaction. Oh, so I'm trying to figure out, sorry, what's this all about? He's, ah. What's this all about? You cracked on what? some. What? You cracked on a few pounds since the last time I saw you. <laughs> I look more. Built out. Yeah. Right? Yes. Really? No. It's not muscle. Uh, is that muscle? No. I don't okay. Know. No, no, no. But what is muscle? What's it mean? Like a six pack, where when that oh okay oh okay, okay. you pull this thing up and it looks hot and sexy and all the ladies uh, are like uh, uh, no um my new York work well, my new work is really hard. What are you doing now? Um, tree service, tree tree train. Do y'all charge a lot? Huh? Is it expensive? Uh, yeah, I, I, I work with my brother. My brother is a climber. He's uh, got all the boys. So what do y'all charge to cut a tree down? Uh huh. How much do you charge to cut a tree? Uh, charge. How much does it cost? Oh, okay, okay. Um, so it depends. Uh, the size of a job. Uh, so, what do you work. do for an air mono? Uh huh. Air mono. What will you do for me? Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Cheap? Uh, no. So, what's happening is people are coming into the class. Okay. Ada. <laughs> oh, she can't hear me yet. No. And you can you can it's, just pull up over here. If nobody else comes, I'll just have you sit over here. Okay. Um, and then I can put it up there. It's harder yeah. for me to work on that, but I can't. Okay. If you want to be all the way over there and be anti-social. Okay. We are using the. You are. Ada. Hola. Hola. <laughs> Edith, did you meet the new teacher? Yeah. This is the new professor. 
This is uh, Saul. I can't hear you. You're muted. Let me, let me, there we go. We can. Oh, you're so loud now. I mean, screaming at me. I Sorry. Like that since last night. <laughs> hola, hola. De, de, de dónde eres? Aquí de, aquí, vivo aquí en Cedar Hill. Ah, ok. Este, estás en el, en el nivel 3, ¿verdad? Sí. Okay. Yo también soy alumno. Así. Ah, ok. Okay. You know, we're waiting on Enrique. Because Edith doesn't like when I put her on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she says, quit putting me on the spot. Mm -hmm. I was going to try to do this on here, but... The most deepest we've ever been. Okay. Just pull that chair up. It's more comfortable than this one. Oh! Hey, I finally found the CDs. Oh, good. <laughs> I was digging and digging. I said, where in the world did the CDs go? It was pretty bad. <laughs> That's what she sees. She sees that and I see this. Can you read that? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Major four. I'm going to bring it back over here because it's too hard for me to see that way. Can you see my, my screen, Edith? Yes. Parda Nuestro. Padre. Padre. Padre Nuestro. Padre Nuestro. Our Father in Heaven, the Lord's Prayer. Hey, I want to test this while you're on here, um, Edith. Just to, let's see. Okay. Let's see what happens when we hit play. Okay. <clears throat> Future 3, copyright 2010. Can you hear it? Pearson Longman, ELT. Yes. Vision of Pearson Education. Page 3. Unit 1. Page 8. Listen. Page 8. Listen. Exercise C. Oh, yeah? There's a guy in the league from Brazil. He's over there. Number 4. <laughs> Wait a minute. I know him. He's from my town, Columba. Hey, Hector, it's me, Marco. Hi. Uh oh, he lost the ball.
All right, at least we know that that works too. So we have some music or some stuff to, to play with. I gotta check on Jessie's little one. She fell, she fell down the bus steps today getting off of the bus. Oh, and Mama was all upset. She couldn't even drive. She was out here tore up. Oh. She was shaking pretty bad. I can't drive my baby. Your head's all bleeding. Oh my goodness. She's gonna be all right. She, she, <laughs> almost three. She's gonna be all right. I promise. Oh, oh. <laughs> I know, yeah. Why do moms do that? Why do y'all do that? Hey, Edith? Yes. You're the mom here. Why do y'all stress so much over your little ones? I, I don't know. I feel the same way. My baby hit her head. Uh, in um, water park maybe like two years ago and I was really bad I was <laughs> almost passed out <laughs> and she was fine <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm just the one over there I had to get on a bus today and get a little child off the bus I said it shouldn't be this hard to get a child off a bus <laughs> and you go in there I said young lady I said we got to go in the bed no I want my mama well, Mama's not here, so. Uh, but I'll tell you what: if you'll get off the bus, we can go into school, and you can call Mama on the phone and talk to Mom. How's that? Say? Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I'll let you talk. To you. <laughs> it's like a flea market. I'm like, come on, for real. <laughs> little children, what do you say? What do you expect? This is yeah. the, you bring this book. Oh. This will be what we're working out of now, uh, Edith. So we did agree we take turns teaching. So this is Edith. Ah. <laughs> um, so she's supposed to have a lesson prepared. Mm -hmm. Not me. I'm really here just to, to listen. Because I figured if y'all create the lessons, things will move a lot better. You will learn more that way. Edith is she's giving me this look like I don't know that I remember any of that in the agreement. Well, the time is now 6.41. I figure Enrique will be with us. Uh, thank you. What are you uh, I figure Enrique will be with us shortly. So we'll start the um, your favorite part, which is the reading. We have our little <laughs> scriptural uh, message when we start. So I, I will read a little bit, and then I'll let you read. And then Saul is going to read. Saul. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, ooh. He's my buddy. I'm so glad he finally made it back to class. Um, so this, it's not, it's on the screen. This one will be on the screen. Um, so this week, it says here, Jesus teaches his disciples. You want to come over? This? I don't mind. I promise. I mean, uh, so it, this week, it's, we're going to talk about Jesus. It says, teaches his disciples how to pray. I didn't really know there was a way to pray. Is there an incorrect way to pray, Edith? I don't think so. No. So when we think of prayer, I always think of just having an old-fashioned conversation. That's, that's what I always look at it as. But it's a, a conversation between you and the Lord. Yeah. Um, so here we'll just start, and I'll read the longest paragraph, and then I'll let you read the, the shortest paragraph. Okay. okay. <laughs> Many people were opposed to Jesus' teaching and public ministry because it was totally different from how they were taught before Jesus came into his ministry. That was the longest paragraph. So now you get the next paragraph. Ah, uh, yeah, all right. <laughs> okay, I'll keep going. <laughs> it says the Jewish. Uh, I don't know why it says the Jewish. The Jewish people were taught by those that were often labeled in the scriptures as the quote religious leaders or the and i quote teachers of the law in quotation these teachers were divided into two main groups pharisees and sadducees neither of which were priests they did not take part in the actual running of the temple 
the offering of sacrifices, or the administration of other religious duties. Instead, both the Pharisees and Sadducees were experts in the law, meaning they were experts on the Jewish scriptures. And I'll read it just so that you guys can just listen to the words. If there's a word that stands out to you, just say, hey, stop, teacher. Okay. Uh, the Pharisees and Sadducees both made it their business to create hundreds of extra instructions and stipulations based on their interpretations of God's laws. Remember, God only gave 10 commandments, but the Pharisees and the Sadducees had added 613 more laws the people were told to obey. Many of these new laws were about tiny, insignificant things that even the Pharisees and the Sadducees did not obey. Jesus told them they had made it too hard for the people to follow God. Most of the Sadducees came from families of noble birth who were very well connected in the politics of their day and didn't care about the lowly man. The Pharisees, on the other hand, were more closely connected with the common people of the Jewish culture, but they were typically merchants or business owners who had also become wealthy enough and didn't pay the common man that much of attention. Despite these differences, both the Pharisees and Sadducees were able to join forces against some, someone they both perceived to be a threat, Jesus Christ. Both were instrumental in working with the Romans and the people to push for Jesus' death on the cross because they didn't want Jesus coming in and taking over their positions. Every day, they would stand out where they could be noticed and pray with loud voices so that they would be heard. They weren't praying as much as just showing off. People walking up would stop, stare, and listen to hear what they had to say. They would think about the Pharisees and the Sadducees and say, look at them. They're so holy. God must love those people the best. We know they were wrong in their thinking. God does not love the proud and boastful, and that is exactly what they were trying to show the people. But the people were confused as to how to worship. These were their teachers. Surely they must be better than anyone else. One day Jesus was talking to the people and said to them, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. Jesus went on to say, when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward already. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and on the street corners to be seen by others. One day Jesus taught the people to pray the way God wanted to hear them pray. He said, when you pray, go into your secret room or go into your closet. Get by yourself so it is just you and God and talk to him just like you would talk to your best friend. He asked the people, did you know God is always listening to you? Did you know he hears the quietest whisper deep inside your heart even before you started to say a single word? Jesus told them, God can't wait to give you all that you need not want. 
You don't have to use long special words like them, and you don't have to use a loud religious voice. You just have to talk to him and spend time with him. Jesus begins to tell the people how God wanted to hear to their prayers. So when you pray in your normal voice, just like you're talking to someone you love very much, pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the glory, power, and the kingdom forever. God was showing people that God would always love them with a never-ending, in, never never-giving-up, always and forever love. They didn't need to hide from God because they didn't think they were good enough for him. They never needed to be ashamed or afraid of coming to God themselves. There was no need to have to go to the Pharisees and Sadducees every time they needed to ask or tell God something. Jesus told them, this is why I have come to you. You can run to me instead, just like a little child runs into the safety of their mama or daddy's arms. This is how the Father wants us to be with him. That's a pretty good story, pretty good thought. So, uh, Edith, would you like to read the Lord's Prayer in Spanish? Yes. Say it to me, say it slowly, because I don't know Spanish, so it'd be okay. nice to learn a few words. Okay. Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre, venga a nosotros tu reino, hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo, danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día, perdona nuestras ofensas como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden, no nos dejes caer en la tentación y líbranos del mal. Amén. Ah. Okay. You got, you, you got, you got, uh, oh, back here. He's just running from one ear to the other. All <laughs> right. Let's see if we can find our, where we left off last week. So we left off, we were on page 12, I think. Is that about right? Mm. We might have been one page. Yes. I think we were actually on page 11, but I think we, we covered most of that, did we not? We had went through the sentences. Yes, I think we finished the page 11. Because we were talking about simple presence and all that fun stuff, and uh -huh. y'all were ready to smack me and all that kind of good stuff, remember? Yes. Um... I have to keep this. Hmm. I have to keep this open so I can see when Enrique decides to join the class. But he doesn't get off to win seven. Is that right? He says six thirty, but I think he cook and everything before class. <clears throat> okay. So tonight. Is listen and read the article. So we need to be on our little CD player. So let me see if I can find it. And so tonight, instead of hearing Joshua read, we, we get to hear the system read for us. So it says CD1. Yeah. Hmm. G9. <coughs> Page 12. Read. When people came to the U.S. from other countries a hundred years ago, they went to large cities like New York and Chicago. These days, newcomers are also moving to smaller cities around the country. Why this change? Some reasons are the lower cost of living, 
stable neighborhood, better schools, and more living space. Small cities may offer a better quality of life, but there can be problems. Big cities like New York and Los Angeles are prepared for new immigrants. Immigrant communities already live there and can help newcomers. But what about small cities? It is sometimes more difficult for immigrants to settle in them. Green Bay, Wisconsin is an example. When families came from Laos, Mexico, and Central America, Green Bay was not ready for them. The city had jobs, but almost no interpreters. Very few people spoke Hmong or Spanish. The mayor wanted the city to welcome the new residents. First, he met with Hmong and Latino leaders. Then the city hired interpreters to work with schools, hospitals, and the police. The interpreters helped people get information on health care, education, legal issues, jobs, and housing. Green Bay found ways to help its newcomers, but the newcomers also found ways to help themselves. Women in the Hmong and Latino community also took steps to build their community. They turned a store into a community center. The store had been selling cigarettes and alcohol to children. The women were angry, so they raised money and bought the store. It is now the Howe Neighborhood Family Resource Center. Every year, the center helps 4,000 families with food, rent, and legal advice. Moving to a smaller city can be difficult, but it can create opportunities. Many people are making successful lives for themselves in smaller cities throughout the U.S. We may have to listen to that again uh, here in a second, but at least we, we can listen to it. So it says groups, and since we really can't work in groups, and it's just Saul here and Edith. So Edith, yeah. she lives all the way in Egypt. Uh, <laughs> She decided she wanted to learn. Uh, okay, it's out at Adam, but uh, <laughs> either way. So it says here some questions. Do you think it's better to live in a big city or a small city? I like a small city. <laughs> okay. I mean, do you like living in a big city or a small city? Small city. So why do y'all like, so I've got two of y'all that say you like living in small cities. So now the question is why? Por qué? Por qué? Uh, I don't know. I like, I, like I told you the other day, I like the quiet and you know that I can maybe sleep with my door open and nobody's coming give me. Okay. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. More jobs yeah. in a small city. Mm. Um, security. security. I would say in the yeah. smaller cities, it's easier to to keep them safe. Uh, mm -hmm. You'll have more police officers walking around toting, mm -hmm. toting guns. So. Or at least there's the perception that it's safer. You might even be safer out in the, the country where everybody out there, they're toting around a shotgun. You go banging on their door and come trying to walk through the house, frolicking, what are they going to do? You're going to meet uh, Mrs. Smith and Mr. Weston. <laughs> <laughs> you better walk back out that door. You know what's good for you. Uh, okay. I like the big cities. Uh, just because there's so much to do, uh, there are so many resources available to you in the big cities. Uh, as a general, as a general rule, I think of a big city. I think of Nashville. You got lots of entertainment. You got all the major hospitals. So if you got sick, it would make me feel better knowing I'm going there than maybe to a little small rinky-dink hospital where you might not make yeah. it. You know. Uh, they might be able to stabilize you here, but from there, I'd say, get me on an ambulance and send me to Vanderbilt. Um, but then there's sports. I mean, when you think about Nashville, there's lots of yeah. sports. You mm -hmm. know, now I like soccer, but yeah. there may be folks in the room that like baseball or football or softball, yeah. whatever it may be, but soccer, 
I mean, that's something spectacular. You go down yeah, I love soccer too. <laughs> yeah, see? What yeah. about you? But, but we serve, but we, uh, in a small city, but we can go to the city. So Saru says that we live in the small city, but then we can travel to these others. Mm. Which is well, not that's right. <laughs> we do have a car, so as long as we keep pumping oil out of the ground, we'll be able to do those things. Uh, modern living has made it easy to, to move about. Okay, so let's think about the big city and the small city. So the next question, it says, what are the problems of each? So are there any problems with living in a big city? Mm. You? Yeah, the you know the the how you say it delinquency how you say it delinquency the, yes for the youth mm -hmm. are you talking about young people being delinquent doing things they're not yes yes do? yes uh huh okay and what else too much traffic too traffic. Mm -hmm. Yes. Traffic is always so fun. Mm -hmm. Life in a city is fast. You, you, I will say that it's a little stressful living in a city. Yes, that's right. <laughs> At least for me, it would be a little more stressful. Uh, people are up in your comfort zone, you see. Look, here I am. I'm up in Salu's comfort zone. Look. <laughs> 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 he knows I love him. Um, yes, and I think cities, as a general rule, have a lot, like they have to deal with sanitation issues. Uh, they deal with poverty at a different level than what we are accustomed to seeing here, like in a small city. We see, we, we work, I think, pretty diligently to take care of our poor people that we know need things. But if you go to Nashville, you see homeless people everywhere i mean they're out on the streets they're on the bridges uh, mm -hmm. it, it's pretty it's discouraging to say the least and you would think so with a big city you should have more job opportunities but yeah. that's not always the case i think sometimes you have better job opportunities in your small city but then mm -hmm. the high paying jobs are going to be in your big cities that require maybe more skill set uh, than would be necessary at the local level yeah and I think you will find folks in the big cities are not always as friendly or cordial or inviting, whereas your, your little small communities, more so the, the ma and pop type communities, they're so excited to see people. And come on in, you can be a part of our family. Although, although I will say there are some small little towns, not going to name any out loud since we're being recorded, but there are small towns that they are not very inviting, especially to people of different colors. Yeah, that's right. I, I think that would be fair. They make it hard on them. Okay, mm -hmm. so the next question says, what are good things about each? So I think we've mentioned some problems and we've mentioned a few good things about each already. Yes. There are two, there are two words up there that need to be defined. So what's that first word in the little purple box? Do you see it? Or it's not a purple box, but you're, it's yellow on your page, I think. It looks purple from my scanner. Yeah, the mayor. Mayor. So what is a mayor? Edith? Um, it's uh, like <laughs> um. someone that leads the town or the city. Okay. So they, from they, the government. government of a town or a city. So that's a pretty uh, mm -hmm. important individual then, correct? Yes. So you would have a, a, so here in Robertson County, we have city mayors and county mayors. Yes. Or, uh, let me rephrase. City mayors and a county mayor. So the county mayor is over all the county. The city, city mayors only have control over their little city. Mm-hmm. All right, so so what about legal advice? What is that? What does the book say that is? It's from uh, Your problems regarding? Regarding law. 
Okay, so problems regarding the law, such as getting a green card. Uh, so legal advice, is it free? Um, hmm. So legal advice yeah. could be a whole lot of stuff. If I wanted to get married, which you met, you met the lady tonight. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't know how, how to Wait, is that like a mayor? So a mayor is the is the head of a local government. Uh -huh. So we have a county mayor here, uh, and then from there you have a, a city mayor. Now the city mayor I don't know very well for Springfield, but you have a city mayor in Greenbrier. You have one in White House. Adams, Cooperstown of all places, uh, and some city mayors do not receive salaries. Some of them are just there more as a, a political figure. Um, of course, the county mayor, he, he Mr. Bogle, uh, he certainly has a salary. He makes pretty well, actually, about a hundred thousand a year. So he does really well in his position. But he also has a lot of stress. Anything that goes on in the county, we all look to him. What are you doing to fix it? Our sewers are backing up. What are you doing to fix it? Our schools are going in the crapper. What are you doing to fix it? Even though he doesn't have control over, like when you think about crime, he doesn't have control over the crime. Because they, who, who takes care of dealing with crime? Either one of you know? Uh, what did you say? I, I can hear that. So who takes, who takes care of dealing with uh, people that don't follow the law? Uh, the police? The police. So in a, in, a, in a county, who is the chief law enforcement officer of a county? We call them what? They walk around with a big hat on. Uh, Starts with an S. So, no. Sheriff. Oh, yeah, the sheriff. <laughs> So if the, if, the, if the county is in experiencing a lot of crime, the mayor would work with the sheriff. So the mayor can help the legislative body, uh, just like we have a legislative body that provides oversight for the nation, which is the Congress. At the yeah. local level, we have county commissioners. And so they are the ones that levy tax and they, they make laws that uh, pertain to Robertson County. He works with them. Uh, and we have a director of schools if there were school yeah. issues, he too is a, now he is appointed by an elected board, uh, which is a little different than what some states do. Most states elect their superintendent. Uh, and again, they answer to the people. So either way, so when you think about uh, a mayor, a mayor can be over a huge city like New York, where they got millions of citizens uh, to a little small town with 500 people. Um, and then your legal advice, uh, that, that comes in all forms and fashions. When I think about legal advice, if you're getting married, you would want legal advice. If you're getting ready to buy a house, you're gonna want some type of legal advice. Uh, if you're getting ready to sue somebody, you're certainly gonna want legal advice. So those individuals assist you. Uh, if you're needing to, if you're needing to uh, become a citizen of the country, for which you live, you certainly would seek out an attorney that's familiar with immigration law. So legal advice is different depending, I would not go to a, a divorce attorney and ask for advice on how to become a citizen. Why would I not do that? Because he don't know what to do. <laughs> he doesn't know what to do. And you would say, but he's a lawyer, so he should know what to do. Yeah, but he got his speciality. <laughs> Speciality, there you go. Yeah. I like having just a few folks in the class. It's, it's very, it makes it more personal. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we, we're going to listen to this article one more time. Okay. Uh, and then, or do y'all want to read it? Whatever. <laughs> How about we listen to it and then y'all read it so that you, you okay. I want to hear you say these words. Page 20. Read. 
When people came to the U.S. from other countries 100 years ago, they went to large cities like New York and Chicago. These days, newcomers are also moving to smaller cities around the country. Why this change? Some reasons are the lower cost of living, safer neighborhoods, better schools, and more living space. Small cities may offer a better quality of life, but there can be problems. Big cities like New York and Los Angeles are prepared for new immigrants. Immigrant communities already live there and can help newcomers. But what about small cities? It is sometimes more difficult for immigrants to settle in them. Green Bay, Wisconsin is an example. When families came from Laos, Mexico, and Central America, Green Bay was not ready for them. The city had jobs, but almost no interpreters. Very few people spoke Hmong or Spanish. The mayor wanted the city to welcome the new residents. First, he met with Hmong and Latino leaders. Then the city hired interpreters to work with schools, hospitals, and the police. The interpreters helped people get information on health care, education, legal issues, jobs, and housing. Green Bay found ways to help its newcomers, but the newcomers also found ways to help themselves. Women in the Hmong and Latino community also took steps to build their community. They turned a store into a community center. The store had been selling cigarettes and alcohol to children. The women were angry. So they raised money and bought the store. It is now the Howe Neighborhood Family Resource Center. Every year, the center helps 4,000 families with food, rent, and legal advice. Moving to a smaller city can be difficult, but it can create opportunities. Many people are making successful lives for themselves in smaller cities throughout the U.S. All right. So. Have students read these words and definitions silently, explain any words students need help with. So, we've listened to this. Are there any words uh, that stand out to you that make you say, mm, I need some explanation? Mm. There are some words that are bold. Mm -hmm. So, are there any words that just stand out to you that you're like, I need some extra help with. Mm. Anything that was difficult, well, you know the truth is when I make y'all read this out loud. When I make y'all read this, then I'll hear the words. Hold on, I'm going to move my camera back so that when Saul gets over here and starts reading. I'll make him be in the spotlight too. I don't want you to feel all alone out there. Okay. <laughs> so let's read the first paragraph. Edith, would you read the first paragraph for me? Yes. There's a word you don't understand. Just look or just tell me and I'll help Okay. You. Okay. When people come to the U.S. from other countries a hundred years ago, they went to large cities like New York and Chicago. These days, newcomers are also moving to smaller cities around the country. Why this change? Some reasons, reasons are the lower cost of living, safer neighborhoods, better schools, and more living space. Okay. So when people came to the U.S., not come, okay? Okay. Be came. Yeah. Okay. You come, but you're doing it right now when you came uh, okay. in the past. Uh, uh, okay. Past. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let uh, yours truly come over and read. Mm -hmm. you get the, you get the mm -hmm. I want you to I want you to feel loved here today. Okay. So if they're watching you. There are three thousand people watching. <laughs> so just start talking and. You're Oh, okay. Okay. He's trying to be cute. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> small cities may offer a better quality of life, but there can be problems. Big, big cities like New York and Los Angeles are prepared, prepared, prepared. 
prepare for a new immigrant 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 community already lives there yeah. there and um, there live so immigrant communities already live live okay immigrant community communities already live there and um, can help newcomers but but what about small cities it is uh, some sometimes more difficult for immigrants immigrants to settle in town um, settle where settle in them in them in them mm -hmm. okay. So live, y'all see that, that four letter word, L-I-V-E. So he mm -hmm. said live. Live, live. So live is correct, but live is correct too. Depending yes. on that, depending on how, where the place is said it and what's going on before and after the word. We were at a live concert. That's L-I-V-E. Okay. We were at a live concert. Live. We live in Tennessee. L I V E, depending on okay. how you use it, yeah. will depend on how the word is pronounced. Okay. It's, uh, for example, right now it's uh, uh, the class. The class is live class. This is a live class. Live class. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, Edith. The next paragraph. Okay. Green Bay, Wisconsin, is an example. When families came from Laos, Mexico, and Central America, Green Bay was not ready for them. The city had jobs, but uh, almost no interpreters. Very few people spoke Hmong or Spanish. The mayor wanted the city to welcome the new residents. First, he met with Hmong and Latino leaders then the city hired interpreters to work with the schools, hospital, and the police. Okay. So, let's see if there was any words that just took you. Wanted. Which one? Um, interpreter. 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 And those are individuals that speak or tr so when I think of an interpreter the another way you could say is a translator it uh -huh. yeah. listens to somebody say something in one language and then speak it back in the, another language uh, and they make good money you guys uh -huh. they make money some of them make 25 30 dollars an hour just to sit around and listen to people talk mm -hmm. uh, other, other word um, spoke spoke is um, Passive. Spoke is the past of speak. Mm -hmm. So if we, we speak right now, we are speaking uh, or we speak uh, clearly in class or last week we spoke about oh, because it's something that happened. Yeah, speak or spoke. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. What else stands out that you guys are struggling with? Mm. Like the may the mayor want wanted. Do want. you say wanted or want? Wanted. So the mayor. Wanted. So the mayor. So you would say I want mm -hmm. a million dollars, or I want to hire interpreters. That, that, so that's how you would use the word want. Mm -hmm. The wanted the city, so that that's, mm -hmm. that's something that he's he's hoping will happen. So wanted, oh, okay. not quite happened yet, wanted. but it's, it's, it's what he hopes to happen in the near future. The wanted is like a charge, something. A what? Uh, like a charge. Uh, future. I think of wanted as something that's not quite happened yet. Mm -hmm. So when you add that ed, it's something that's it's, it's, oh, you're yeah, adding yeah, like yeah. a future. Wanted it's not quite happened yet. Okay. Okay. 
that interpreters, hospitals, and there was another word you said though that um, Hung would work with Spanish. When you said people spoke Hmong or how did you say that? Hmong. Or the Spanish? Or or yeah. Spanish. 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 Or Spanish. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So the next next little paragraph I will read because it's short. Okay. Guys, I want you guys to have the big paragraph. I just got the eyes cut at me by so we're like, I can't believe you're going to make me read the big one. So the interpreters <laughs> helped people get information on health care, education, illegal issues, jobs, and housing. What do you mean legal is English? English. Issues? Issues. So issues, I would say, I think when you have issues, you have problems, mm -hmm. you have concerns, so legal concerns, legal issues, legal problems. Uh, I think that would be a good thing. Like a, a legal advice? Legal um, advice, but it differs. I mean, yes. Legal advice okay. is just that, is, but... Is that help? So... So legal advice to someone is helping you. you are legal, that's something you seek, legal advice. Legal issues are problems. You may not want legal issues. No. <laughs> if you're having issues with your taxes, that's a legal issue. That's going to probably land you up in a meeting with the IRS and they're going to say, where's your I 10 number and all that. And you're going to be like, what? I didn't know I was supposed to have that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <clears throat> my turn? It's your turn, my friend. Okay. Green Bay uh, found ways to help its newcomers, but the newcomers also found ways to help them feel them. Them, themselves. Themselves. Themselves, yes. <laughs> what? Women in the Hmong and Latino community also took steps, took, took steps to build their community. They turned their uh, story into, into a community center. The store has been selling cigarettes and alcohol to children. The women were, were angry. So they raise money and bought the store. It is now the home neighbor, neighbor, neighborhood, neighborhood family resource center. Every year, the center helps for thousand families with food, drink, and legal advice. Okay. okay, so let's go back up here. Where it says alcohol, so had been selling cigarettes and alcohol to children. What's right after that? Mm. What would you say? Um, it, um, Who became a Having in the, in the small city, uh, the first yeah, um, right. yeah, yeah, that's what's going on. I'm just wanting you to read the word. So the what? The woman. The woman. Woman. So look at the look at the way that word is spelled. W O M E N. Woman. Women. 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 Because it's more than one. It says that they, that the so the store had been selling. So it says the women. The women. Were angry. So that means there's more than one. If you have the woman, it's one one woman, it's one lady, one girl woman. that's angry. Woman. But they said women. women. So yeah. women, Moral. lots of them. Yeah. You don't want to be in the room with a lot of angry women. <laughs> you better clear the house. <laughs> She's laughing because she knows it's true. Down. <laughs> Okay, okay, so the women were angry. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And they ra so they raise, yeah, raise. So that means to, to, in this instance, you're raising money. So that means you're trying to get as much money as you can. You can accumulate mm -hmm. uh, money and bought the store. Okay. Um, what do you mean? Then then sell. So, but the newcomers also found ways to help themselves. Uh, so themselves, so you could say uh, each person should help themselves daily. So that means you help you. Uh, themselves means that the group helps themselves. Their selves. They were doing things for each other. Instead of going out and asking for a lot of help from others, they're doing it themselves. Does that make sense that you do it? So you, Edith and I, we help ourselves. Uh, or we help, if there were 10 other people just over here in the other building, we would say we, we would help them. We help themselves. Uh, I don't know how to explain what you want me to say. All I know is that you're doing for you. And if it's a group of folks, we do for ourselves or themselves. And then if you have a whole group, it's themselves uh, or them. So it's a, it's a group doing for each other in that instance. Is there any other word that stood out? So? Yes. Go ahead, Edith. Uh -huh. Yes. I got a question because uh, on here on, oh, let me see, let me see. On when they say after community, they say they turn a store into a community. What is turn instead of turn it like wanted? So turned. It's yeah. Just the way we, it's just the way that we pronounce it. So uh, wanted. Uh, Oh, hold on, say say your question one more time. Yeah, because I I doesn't understand why you just on one you pronounce the E D and in the other one you don't pronounce it. Like turn. You know they got E D but you don't pronounce it. You don't say it when you talk. Probably one of those, that's one of the things that complicates English. It's just a special rule. Uh, and mm -hmm. I don't think that there's actually a way for me to explain that, other than that's just the way it's always been. So they turned a store into a community center. So turned in that instance would mean to transform, uh, to develop, to create, uh, to refurbish. You could use a lot of other words to say uh, they refurbished the store, they transformed the store, they revitalized the store, they recreated, they reimagined. All of those are different ways of saying terms. It just like means they start, did something. Huh? Like a start on something. The starting of something new. So they, they went from one thing you turn, turn on. you turn a light switch on and off, but if you talk to I, tell me I did it in the past, I turned it. So mm -hmm. turned the light off last night before I left. Okay. Oh, it's it's not. <laughs> I should have answered it. Hi. Okay, so are there any other questions you have there? Mm -mm. That was it. All right. So read the. Let's read the last paragraph. Okay. Mo moving to a small city can be difficult, but it can create, create opportunities. Many people are making successful lives for themselves in the small in the small cities through the USA. So think about what you. So let's say moving to a what city? A small. Smaller. A smaller city. That er so smaller. So you would have a small desk, but Edith has a smaller desk. Oh, okay. Okay, so it's just a slight difference. Uh, 
So smaller city can be difficult, but it can create opportunity. Many people are making successful lives for themselves in small cities or the smaller cities. Smaller cities. So yes, we smaller. live. So I live. In comparison to Nashville, Springfield is a smaller city. But in comparison, yes. uh, Springfield in comparison to Adams, Adams is the smallest. Yes. <laughs> it's tiny. It's many. Okay. If, if you blink your eyes going through Adams, you might actually pass all the way through and didn't even know you went through it. Okay. Oh, how do you feel? Me or him? <laughs> feel like you, you learned anything? Let's yes. scroll down here to see I can scan a bunch of pages, but we never know how far we'll get in one night. <laughs> I want y'all I want y'all to understand what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Just speeding through it doesn't help you. And I sent Enrique a text message and he told me that he was still working. So that's no. uh that's crazy. <laughs> I hope they're paying him. He might he might he might try to join, who knows? All right, so the next one says read the article again. What is the main idea? So we're not going to actually reread it, but what is the main idea? So over here in this, this, this corner, Edith, what does it say? Reading skill, understanding the main idea. So the main idea, uh, the main idea is the most important idea in an article. The main idea is often found in the first paragraph. Mm -hmm. Often found does not mean that it always is. But mm -hmm. and Enrique is joining us. Okay. Believe it. All right. <laughs> so let's go to. Uh, here it says circle the correct letters. So what is the main idea of the story? Or the article that we just read. Um, so the How Neighborhood Family Resource Center helps families with food and rent. No, and no. Small cities are not able to receive new immigrants. Mm, um, that's what no. I said. Uh, many immigrants are moving to small U.S. cities to find a better life. So yes. up three. Uh, that would be the, the best choice. That's what the main idea yes. was of the, the paragraph. Very good. So, Enrique? Yes, sir. We've been waiting on you for two and a half hours. Oh, I'm so sorry. Two and a half hours? <laughs> yes, we started, <laughs> we started at five. <laughs> no, I don't think so. We're starting at five o'clock now so we can get a few extra hours in. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm so sorry, but I just finished work. Uh, you know, we have been so busy. I hope they're paying you overtime. Oh, yes, they did. I figured that's why you agreed to do it. Edith and I, <laughs> Edith and I sit around and dream about what overtime would look like. Because <laughs> we don't get no overtime. <laughs> we just to get regular pay. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm yeah, I'm sorry. I, just... I apologize. We're glad to have you on here. So, who is here too tonight? But uh, he had to step away for a second. Uh, he's, he's dealing with a, a personal issue. Who? All right, we're, <laughs> he's, oh. a, he's one of my guys that was in my other class, and I don't oh. know how to say his last name J U A R E Z. And I know J is not pronounced in Spanish. J J U A R E Z. So. Oh, what is? What is? What is? He's a good guy. I love him to pieces. But that's the last name. That's the last name. The first name is uh, Saul. Uh, S A U L. Oh. I call him Saul. Oh. 
So. Oh, okay, I gotcha. <laughs> go over too well. Uh, so either way, so we're we've got it up. Hopefully, you can see our screen, my friend. And we yes, read, sir. We read this wonderful article on page twelve. Um, we're on page 13, and so now we're going to read the sentences and write true or false with the T being true and F or false. So uh, we'll start with the first one. I'll do it for you because uh, it's the hardest one always to answer. Uh, 100 years ago, immigrants did not usually move to small cities. Well, if we read the article, we know that, that is a true statement. Mm -hmm. So that was the hardest one. So I'll leave all the easy ones for you guys. Uh, estudiante. <laughs> ah, all right. So uh, Edith, I'll let you go. And then Sol's coming back to the hot chair. What page is it? We're on page 13. 30? Oh. No, 13. Uno, tres. Uno, tres. Oh, 13. <laughs> Great. Okay, so, gotcha. Okay. So this Thank is you. Enrique. Enrique? Yeah. Yes, sir. Hello, Enrique. Hi, how are you? We don't know what Enrique looks like. He's never showed us a photo of him. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he's got an iPhone, he won't let us see him. So. Next time. Next time. Oh. All right. So, <laughs> uh, Edith, I'll let you read number two. And then tell me, is it true? Or is it okay. It's less expensive to live in Green Bay than in New York. I think it's true. It's less expensive to live in Green Bay, in Green Bay than in New York City. And you said it's yes. what? True. True. New York City, city you've got to be like a millionaire. Yes. <laughs> It costs like a hundred dollars just to go one block in a cab. A hundred dollars mm -hmm. I walk on my knee. <laughs> All right, so number three. Okay. Uh, first, uh, Green Bay had many debtors for the new monk and Latino family. Is that true or false? And you've got the article to look at on page 12. So at first, Green Bay had many interpreters oh. for the new, ah, false. Because remember, the mayor was trying to do what? Uh, he was trying to, to hire some interpreters. Hire. He yeah. wanted to hire interpreters. Hire. That's right. Okie dokie. Uh, number four, I'll let Enrique read it, and then we can help him answer it. Mm. The monk and Latino families were able to improve their community. What do y'all think it is? Saru, I don't even know what is the monk, to be honest. I mean, H-M-O-N-G. What that's, does that mean? That's, that's, a, that's a Latin That's, that's a Latin. Word. People. It's what? I think they're Central American. No, I think it's Chinese people. Chinese. No. Yes, because no. look, look no. the girl. No, in, look in the, the girl. Photo. She looks like Chinese. No. <laughs> in the photo, it looks like it's from America or Mexico. Or America, or America, or America. Oh, uh, no, I think it may be Philippines because Philippines yeah, have a like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I don't I think you. Wow, I mean, she looked at them and just said, oh, they look Asian. They must yeah. be Yeah, Asian. she looks Asian. <laughs> I look at her and think of her as a, uh, like American Indian almost. Maybe she's dressed up. Maybe she's uh, Russian. Or Hawaiian. Russian. Oh, what? Well, it can be. <laughs> All right, so that one would be true. So the Hmong and the Latino families were able to improve their community. So that's a true statement. They were able to do it. It took a lot of work from the ladies, though, who got mad. Uh, yeah. So Edith, number five. The city bought, bought, bought the bought? old 
Bag. Uh, I always have trouble with that. Bag, the uh, house, neighborhood, family, resource center. Did they buy it? Uh, no, I think it's false. It is false. Who bought it? The women's. The women's. Women. No, women. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we mean it because they got mad because people were doing what? They were selling what to the young people? Cigarettes and alcohol and all to the, the children. All the mamas got up. They said, "Not in our neighborhood. We won't be putting up with that. Nobody's selling my child any drugs." Okay, so let's go ahead and look at section four. Unless somebody's got a question. Oh, no, I'm good right here. I like you being in the hot spot. Next week, Enrique is going to be all dressed up, and we're going to get to see who he is. So he's not a sexy fella. All right, so vocabulary and context. Look at the bold-faced words in the article on page uh, 12. Uh, this their meetings. Oh, excuse me, what the Uh, excuse me, why? Uh, guess their meaning. Complete the sentences uh, with the correct words. So, number one would be, uh, so you get to be first. I know you love when I pick on you. Um, so we're picking words from page 12. All these words yeah. like cost of living, quality of life, interpreters, opportunity, those okay. are the words that we're going to be using to fill in the blanks over here. But you've got you to be creative and try to figure out what they mean. Okay. Um, small cities often have a better quality of life than big cities because they have sa safer neighborhoods. Very good. So small cities often have a better quality of life. And we all want a better quality of life. All yes. right. Number two, Enrique. The cost of living in cities like New York is high because housing is expensive. That is correct. Oh. Edith, number three. <clears throat> Large cities often offer more jobs opportunities than the small cities do. Very good. Perfecto, perfecto. Mm. <laughs> Number four. <laughs> yeah, so we're waiting on you. Cool. <laughs> so so <laughs> sometimes it's hard for immigrants to move to small cities because they are because there are many not be no there may not be um, no interpreters at school and there, not, there may not be no. enough enough mm -hmm. there may not be enough what uh -oh. it's the only word left you said it you already said it yeah interpreter interpreter, interpreter. Mm -hmm. At school and hospital who speak their language. Hospital. Remember that S. Y'all like to y'all like to take the S's off of words. I don't understand that. <laughs> Those <Yeah>. words <laughs> just violated them when you take the S off. Okay. <laughs> so it says show what you know, discuss when you moved to the United States. Was it very difficult? So, Enrique, when you moved to the United States, tell me, was it very difficult? The language. Yes. <laughs> the English language it was uh, very difficult for me. Always was. Always been. <laughs> um, yeah. I had a lot of issues with so, the English when you language. Moved here, though, I mean, did you experience any challenges? on the journey here? Or was it just easy peasy you went to the US border and said, let me in? No, I didn't get to the border. I fly, I flew from my country and I arrived by the airport in Miami. And um, 
I know. I mean, I cannot complain. I get a job right away, three days after. But um, I started working in Fort Lauderdale 20 years ago. 20 years ago, Fort Lauderdale was 90% American. And was of no many Spanish speakers. And uh, I had very difficult time. I was, there was a, a convenience store. Then some people get mad with me because I didn't speak the language. I was working on um, um, grave shift. Is what you, how you say it, I believe? What is, is a, the grave shift? Is it how you say it? That is correct. So what okay, is the grave, grave shift. shift. Uh -huh. You want me to say it? Do you want to add, or are you asking them? I'm asking you. Oh, the grave shift no, is it when you work. Look of like, what is this new word that's been introduced <laughs> into my vocabulary? Enrique uh, has put a lot of words. I will say he, he he impresses me with his vocabulary. Well, I have been here in the United States for 20 years. So. But uh, um, the grave shift is uh, the shift uh, when you work after midnight, I believe. Very late. It's not a very yeah. fun shift to work. Yeah, it's very I'm late fine. shift to work. Mm -hmm. Then that was my first job in America, in the United States. Then, yeah, that was difficult. Um, I'm thankful that, I mean, I get a decent job uh, to start. Then I stayed in that job for three years and uh, get a promotion to be an uh, assistant manager. And that's how I started learning English there, working in Fort Lauderdale. I was living in Miami, there everybody speaks Spanish. But I was working in Fort Lauderdale, so that forced me to start learning new words. Then, um, yeah. So. I think it's interesting that you said 20 years ago. 19. Yeah, 20 years ago. That wasn't, yeah, 20. Wow. Yes, that, 20 years you ago. Said that Miami or Fort Lauderdale was 90% American. Fort Lauderdale. Miami, no. Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale. So. Yeah. No anymore. <laughs> so that's interesting that you say that. So now you you've made a statement in which you are saying that uh, you're based in America, that you are American if you speak English. So everyone yes. in Fort Lauderdale is American. You may have immigrants that live there, but anybody that lives by by virtue of being on U.S. soil, you're pretty much a U.S. citizen. Now, does everybody there speak English? No. Uh, English, yes. Did they then? Do you speak English? Yes. Does this entire group speak English well? <laughs> no. <laughs> and I have a different perspective on that. When I, I see people living in the United States, uh, I consider you Americans. Uh, you're either Latino Americans or African American or Caucasian. Well, when I'm trying to say, sorry to interrupt you, but what I'm trying to say that American means mainly was Americans that don't speak uh, speak Spanish or any other languages. I see. Okay. That's what I'm trying to say. So that's what I'm saying that it was forcing me to learn the language, the English language. Then I moved to Nashville, and Nashville, 16 years ago was uh, very American too. I mean, now it's, I mean, it's not much like it used to 16 years ago. So did you find, which city was more welcoming, Fort Lauderdale or Nashville? I think both. Um, I think in Nashville has more opportunities, job opportunities for myself because I'm bilingual. And um, again, I mean, Fort Lauderdale, you know, if I did, if I, that's what I move out because four years after, I mean, was so many immigrants coming to South South Florida, and they, you know, lowered their wages because many people come from Cuba when they don't make any money, or Venezuela or any other countries, and they start working for the minimum wage, and they speak the language, they speak Spanish, and many speak Spanish, and many are bilingual as well. You know, when the crisis in Colombia and Venezuela was very bad, it was so many professional people moving to the United States and they speak, uh, they were bilingual. So when you live in, a, in South Florida, they don't pay you more because you are bilingual like they do it, still doing it here, thanks God. Okay. Yeah. 
what about you, Edith? When you moved to the U.S., was it difficult? Yeah. What challenge? Yeah, the, the language, like he say, and mm -hmm. you know, uh, the place too, because you miss your family and everything. The food. I remember when I get here, nineteen nineteen years ago, like Enrique. Uh, it wasn't a lot of Mexican food or, you know, where to buy certain food. So are you trying I to like. say that having to eat American food was rough? Yes, well, for me, yes. <laughs> I, I, I remember maybe the, the first two months, maybe I just eat um, burritos and that's it. <laughs> Oh come on, Eddie. Don't, don't you like don't cheese. you like cheeseburger? Yeah, but yeah, and then I get fat. I remember I get a lot of fatness <laughs> because you know in Mexico you walk a lot and you eat but you walk a lot and you don't need a lot of junk food like you know here. <laughs> so I get I maybe you know when I get here I was maybe like ninety pounds and then maybe in two months I was like hundred and twenty. But let me tell you this, I'm disappointed with you when you say junk food because, you know, when people say cheeseburger is a young, uh, young food, I don't, I don't believe so because if you get a good meat and you get it with cheese and vegetables and there's tomato and lettuce and onions, I think that's a healthy food, to be honest with you. Mm. Don't you think so? I think if, you, if it's a homemade cheeseburger, if you're going... Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. yeah. If you made yeah. it, yeah, yeah. You go to McDonald's. Yeah, but you know... Yeah, it oh, was, no. that, that was difficult for me in that time. Now, no, um, now I remember I went to Mexico maybe I mean, very in bad. years yeah. ago, and I and I remember I I was missing the hamburgers and everything. <laughs> <from right here>. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> but you know, in that time it was uh, meat and potatoes. We like meat and potatoes and lots of vegetables and green beans. That's right. Green beans are the best. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. sir. Let's and what about, what is the name of the other guy? Samuel? Saul? Saul. You know, I, had to, I had to kick him out of class. He just cursed at me. Oh. <laughs> I told him to get. Did y'all not hear us? We were having an argument. <laughs> we had an argument in the silent language. It's called looks. Well, he's, he's dealing with an issue. So let's move on to our, our next section. We'll let Saul talk to us later about how, how difficult it was for him. And I don't remember where Saul's from, if it was from... Where did you come from, Saul? Uh, okay. Hold on, I gotta look. He's from Mexico. What? Mu Monterrey. Monterrey. Oh, okay, so Monterey. Oh, that's a good. That's uh, I never been there in, in Monterrey, but uh, I heard good things about that. And uh, well, there. they like to party there, Enrique. Oh yeah, <laughs> so that's a good place to go. <laughs> <laughs> that's the place. <laughs> no, a good time. You go there. So I always tried to get me to go out and party a time or two, but I just told him I can't do it. I'm, <laughs> He's a good guy. All right, let's move on to the, the lesson five. Yeehaw, holidays. Look at that, you guys. So we'll be turning to page 14. So talk about holidays and celebrations. So we're going to be doing some listening and some speaking. So before you listen, let's look at A. It says the West Indies is made up of many islands near the U.S. Look at the map, name two islands. So look at these islands. You guys see the islands here? Mm-hmm. Mm. I think people like to go there to get away. So Have you been there? One. What about this one right here? Cuba. Is that a good Cuba. place to go? Mm, yes. Well. <laughs> Depends on who you ask. So Enrique says absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't say absolutely. Well, I've been there. 
He he loves the communist way of life. No, <laughs> no, that is not true. <laughs> Oh, you okay. are putting words in my mouth that ah, you didn't say. Ah, I love it. <laughs> no, yes. Uh, I use cigars. Say it again. I hear they make wonderful cigars in Cuba. Yes, uh, and I've been there. I've been in Cuba. I went a long time ago before I moved to the States. Okay. I've never been. You know, I've never left the country. Oh, you've never been outside the country? No. One day I'll find somebody that'll go with me. I, I'm hoping this Elbert, Helbert uh, fellow will go with me somewhere one day. Oh, yeah. That would <laughs> be fun. We're on page uh, 14. Let's go flip it over here. Yeah. All right. So we, we've named one island Cuba. It's a pretty big one. What else do we see over there? You mean another island? Jamaica. You see another island. Jamaica. Haiti. Uh, Haiti. Uh huh. What about here? Dominican Republic. And Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. I got friends that live in Puerto Rico. Mennonite friends. Uh, huh? Brazilian. Is that what the Puerto Ricans are? No. Oh, just down below. Yes. Brazil. No, that's Colombia. This is Colombia right here. I, I don't see the map. Oh, yes, sir, that one. Mm -hmm. And next to is Venezuela. Venezuela, okay. What's this country? That Which country? One? Nicaragua. Uh, mm -hmm. Nicaragua, Costa Rica. I'm confused now. I can see. Oh, and that's right. I can't see the same picture that you are seeing. <laughs> no wonder he's telling me Antigua uh, in Trinidad and so, uh, Tobago. Tobago. So we would say Trinidad. Trinidad. So I've not been to any of those. It would be fun to go one time to another country, although I would be pretty nervous, I think. Miss Panama. Miss Panama. Yeah. So, you see that picture there, Miss Panama. Where would you like to go for the first? I mean, uh, which which the first country that would you like to visit? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it depends if I if I end up marrying this this, this Honduras lady. If I marry, marry her, I guess I have to go to her country first. She might not have it any other way. <laughs> Honduras? Honduras. Mm -hmm. Although I think I would like to go to Europe and travel there once. Oh, yes. That's, Me too. that's beautiful. <laughs> Me too. I would like to go to uh, Italy, Rome. Uh, I'd like to see Germany, Spain. Mm -hmm. Me too. Um, I, I like, the, Sp I like the, mm -hmm. the Spaniards, the way they say things. I get pretty tickled with them. They just have a fancy way of say, saying stuff. Whereas, you know, you guys say adios. Um, but then if, if they come up, a ver <laughs> <laughs> I just love it. It's just a, it's a different way. Uh, it's sort of like going to Germany. You go to the northern part of Germany and you speak high German. And you go to the southern part of Germany and they speak low German. And low German... I don't want to say it's improper, but it's not as I would sort of think the same way of the Spanish that when you go to Rome, they speak probably the, the purest form of the Latin language. The Spanish is a part of that Latin language. And you guys speak a, a form of it that's a little farther down the, the ladder. Uh, but Latin's hard to I think Latin's hard to understand. Uh, personally. But either way, that's where I'd like to go, Germany specifically, because that's where my family migrated from. So uh, our family, did, my family migrated here during the civil, uh, the, not civil war, but the um, Revolutionary War. They got caught. They were captured by George Washington's army and put in prison. And when they agreed to fight for the colony against the British, that's how they earned their uh, citizenship. So once mm. we won, won the war against against Great Britain, 
that, that tyrant of a king, when it became our own country, they got their citizenship. And so they were the first two Heinermen. They were Hessian, German Hessian soldiers. Um, so either way. All right, let's go to groups. It says every year there are many parades that celebrate the cultures from these islands. Do you like parades? I do. Yes. Why? You knew I was going to ask that question. Mm. I'm a gentleman. I will let Eric to answer first. Ah. Uh -huh. Lady. Well, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> what was that? Um, you want the old to answer? So why do you like parades? Oh, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so why do you like parades? Parades where they do the, the festivities and they have all these decorations and floats and pinatas and they're throwing things at you and the girls and the costumes. The <laughs> Why do you like it? I like it. Mm -hmm. um, maybe a tradition of Excuse me. Work it out. Yeah. Traditional festival in country, maybe. You like the tradition. tradition. Does it, does it see the traditions of your country? Or we could say the traditions of your culture. Okay. Okay. Oh, what was that? He likes to watch all the ladies. <laughs> oh, mercy. Okay. So, Edith, why do you like parade? Well, I like that. The costumes and all the things they put, you know, in the... I forgot the name. Decorations? Yeah, like, yeah. Activities? Yeah, the music too. Ah, musica. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes I come dancing and everything. <laughs> so Halloween, so, so I was asking, is Halloween a considered a parade? Enrique, what would you say? Regarding the parade, uh, I do like it because it, as I chose diversity, has the music, yeah. and I'm fun. I mean, it's, it's good. I think it's an opportunity to share time with friends and with new friends. I like all the food. And food, no, yeah, too. food is too. I, mean, I will miss this year the German um, the okay. Oktoberfest. Uh. Oktoberfest? Are they canceling it? Well, I think they're going to. I don't think they're, they're going to have our fair. Robertson County is doing their fair. I'm I don't pretty think excited. Davidson County is doing it. Yeah, I don't he's think coming to the fair. We're going to get mm. on the roller coaster and go 200 miles an hour. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love I love the the, the Oktoberfest and yeah actually I was planning to go to Germany I have a friend they I live there in Munich this year but with this pandemic is well, yeah I couldn't go. Mm, I need to go with you to Germany. Oh, that'd be fun! I, I always want to go to Germany. Always. It costs a lot of money though. The only mm. I know that's got a lot of money is sitting right there. Well. But you know the best the best thing is to find it out. I I went to Europe and uh, I just bought the tickets eight months before my trip, and I get a round trip to London for seven hundred dollars. Round trip. Eight months before. You gotta buy early. Oh yes, you have to. That's the only way you can you can do it. That's the only way you can do it. Well, I need to do that. Yeah. Okay, so let's 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 move on here because it's already after eight. And so the question that Saul asked, and I want to see if anybody can answer. So Halloween, Halloween is coming up. It's September right now. We'll soon be in October. Mm -hmm. We have Halloween. Is Halloween considered a parade? 
Hmm. I don't think so. I don't know. No. I would say you're correct. So a Halloween is a is a holiday. Yeah, exactly. And people do parade up and down the streets in costumes, mm -hmm. but they're doing correct. It for a different reason. So to parade up and down the streets means to walk up and down the street, to march, to walk, to run. So when you hear someone say to parade around, they were parading around like a bunch of idiots. <laughs> <laughs> That means they were walking around and, and they may have costumes on, they may have signs. Yay, yay, look at me. If you get yeah. that, then no one can. Yay, yeah. yay. You know, like something like that. <laughs> carnival. So, a carnival yeah. is similar. Um, it's a body ground. It, it's a festive event. So, a parade, a carnival, a fair. They're all festive events. They're, they're events where you go to have fun. Uh, generally, you have cultural things that take place. Uh, you almost always have lots of good food that's probably not good for you, but it tastes amazing. Uh, and I would say most of those events, uh, you'll spend a lot of money. Um, that's just my personal opinion. But what I would say a parade and fairs and uh, other festive events, they are generally places where you can take families. Maybe not. Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras in New Orleans. Yeah, but I don't know about uh, Mardi Gras can get pretty rough. They throw they throw jewelry at, jewelry at you and they drink a lot. I don't know if I would take my small children to that. But, oh, no, you can do that. Uh, but well, that's a parade. That's what I'm trying that to say. That is a parade, yes. And yeah. they throw things and, well, there's a lot of other stuff. But there's a lady on here and other people may watch this and I don't want them to be embarrassed. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. So let's go here to my little CD that I miraculously figured out how to use. Thanks to Edith. <laughs> okay, so we're going to listen to CD number 10. Page 14. Listen. Exercises A and B. This is 101.9 Radio New York. We turn now to events for the weekend. Ellen, could you tell us about the West Indian American Day Parade? Certainly, Roger. The annual West Indian American Day Parade takes place this Labor Day weekend on Monday, Labor Day. Thousands of people will dance in beautiful costumes down Eastern Parkway in Brooklyn, New York. The costumes make this an exciting event. And don't forget the free music. You will hear calypso, rap, and reggae music played on guitars and steel drums. Last but not least, don't miss the food. This parade has terrific Caribbean food at low prices. You might want to try some rice and peas or a little curry chicken or goat. Ugh. So Monday, Labor Day, head to Brooklyn. Enjoy the sights, sounds, and the tastes of the West Indian American Day Parade. Okay. So we've listened to the radio announcement about the West Indian American Day Parade. So where is this parade going to take place? Anybody? <laughs> I think it's the way end in the night. <laughs> 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 So we're going to listen to it again. Y'all listen. Yes. Because it's the best. Yeah. So this one, you don't, this one, we don't have the answers in front of us like we had the last time. So, yeah. Escúchame por favor, estudiante. Page 14. Listen. 
Exercises A and B. This is 101.9 Radio New York. We turn now to events for the weekend. Ellen, could you tell us about the West Indian American Day Parade? Certainly, Roger. The annual West Indian American Day Parade takes place this Labor Day weekend on Monday, Labor Day. Thousands of people will dance in beautiful costumes down Eastern Parkway in Brooklyn, New York. The costumes make this an exciting event. And don't forget the free music. You will hear calypso, rap, and reggae music played on guitars and steel drums. Last but not least, don't miss the food. This parade has terrific Caribbean food at low prices. You might want to try some rice and peas or a little curry chicken or goat. So Monday, Labor Day, head to Brooklyn. Enjoy the sights, sounds, and the tastes of the West Indian American Day Parade. All right, ladies and gentlemen, do we recall where is this parade going to take place? And the next contestant on the price is right is Angelique. New York. Can you be more specific? I think it's Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn. That's a place to be to go party. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's look at these questions here. And then we're going to circle the right answers. Uh, more than one answer is sometimes possible. Sometimes. Doesn't mean it's always. Just sometimes. So first question is, so uh, I've got a, a friend in here that's advocating for ladies first. Um, first question. So what can you see at the parade? Ooh. Costumes. And dancers, maybe. Anybody and musicians, musicians. What do y'all think? Y'all listen to the story. Y'all listen to the radio article. Costumes, I do remember hearing that there would be costumes. I believe in musicians. So there would be music. Yeah. Uh, yes. I don't know if they said dancers. I don't recollect. I that. don't think so. Or actors. No, just customs and musicians. I don't think they said dancers. No. Yeah, listen to you over there. That's the party. That's the party. Oh, oh my God. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's like a cowboy festival when you're doing this. <laughs> All right, number two, what kind of music can you hear at this uh, parade? I hear Calypso. Reggae and rap. Rap. Oh, yeah? That's what we're saying. That, that's what the, that's the, what the radio says. That's what I like. Reggae, uh, rap, Calypso. Rap oh. good. Rap's good. I, Enrique sings rap. Did y'all know that? <laughs> no, I don't like rap at all. <laughs> <laughs> Your mama was a fish. Your mama was a fish if it wasn't for him. No, no, never, ever. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> That's not me at all. No. Oh. no. Okay. Number three. Or reggae, nothing like that. I mean, believe me, I won't be in that parade at all. Well, reggae is pretty, uh, that's a pretty festive music. I mean, it's very active. There'll be a lot of jihad and gyrating going on when that music is being played. Well, I prefer reggae than rap, to be honest. I mean, rap, I cannot be there. I will live right, I mean, I will live right away. There's good rap, though, in here, and this is coming from a pretty conservative fellow. They've taken a, they've got uh, rap, they call it apologetic rap, and they take rap songs and turn it into Christian lyrics. It's actually really good. 
Huh. There, well, and that, there's one that they talk about. I need to find that song. I'll try to bring it next week if I don't forget about it. And it talks about, do we wonder why, you know, like we teach about the Easter Bunny and all this stuff in the American school. And we wonder why by the third grade, say that they don't think God exists anymore. You know, it's a, it, it's a powerful message, but it's set to rap. Uh, so I'll have to try to find that song. All right, what can you taste at this event? Taste, which means you put it in your mouth and you're like, oh, goodness, that's so good. Right. Y'all remember what they say we could eat? I don't. I can, I can, I hear rice and peas. Right. Not sure. Did you hear me go, yuck? No. Did you hear me I say that when you were reading? And I went, yeah. <laughs> I don't want no rice, and I really don't want no peas. <laughs> rice? Rice. Peas, I mean, depending on what type, it may be a green pea or a chickpea. I don't know. Peas just don't taste good. Now, they do just smother them in butter. That's about the only way I can choke them down or eat them. All right, what musical instruments can you hear at this event? Anybody? I think okay. So, uh -huh. so, Judy, okay. so what, what kind of, um, what can you just taste? What was the answer? So the answer was rice and pea. They didn't talk about the other stuff. Right? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Because I made a yuck sound when they said, well, I'll eat some rice, but I'm not a big fan of rice. But some folks, are. they bring rice at almost all the Mexican dishes. When I go over to the little restaurant here in town and I'm like, Speedy, you know I'm not going to eat that. Just bring me more guacamole. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. I don't want the rice. So the rice makes me fat. <laughs> um, so what kind of music or instrument will we hear? Can we hear? You know the first one's a no-no. I mean, you're not like you're going to be walking up and down the street with a, a piano strapped to your back. <laughs> uh, but what about number B, steel drums? Do you think you could I hear? I think so. Yeah. You could hear some steel drums. What about guitars? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and violins. Do you think we're really going to hear a violin walking up and down the street? Probably. No. It's a little too fancy for a parade. Mm -hmm. uh, unless we're celebrating Mozart or someone like that. All right, what is free at the parade? Parking. Well, I'd like Music. to the parade you're going to. Music, that's Music. right. Music is free, but you're probably going to pay for the food. You're probably going to have to pay for oh, your right. ticket. Uh, and in the parking, you're going to pay something. It may just be $2, but... When you park 100,000 cars at $2 a pop, you just made $200,000 and all you had to do was take people's money. <laughs> That's my kind of Did you ever think about that? 200,000? Come on. I don't, I don't know. know. Hey, they might. I mean, it doesn't make sense. But it could be. So 200,000. So 200, 5,000 cars. At oh, wow. Piece. That's $25,000. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you can put 5,000 cars in downtown Nashville. And we know they charge more than $5. A lot of those parking lots and their big events are like $25. Yeah, that's crazy. It is crazy now. Huh. And they're building parking garages right now where they're going to go chick-ching, chick-ching. <laughs> big money, y'all. All right, so we're going to listen to another conversation. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. It looks like a, uh, what is that thing? Um, I mean, they look like dragons or something. We better get on out of town. <laughs> China. Let's listen to the next one here. Page 15, conversation. Mmm, this food is great. I brought you some. There are two desserts you must try. Mmm, you're right. They're delicious. 
They remind me of Chinese New Year. We eat a lot of good food then, too. Like what? So many things. We eat special dishes, like noodles for long life, spring rolls for wealth, and oranges for luck. We also visit family and friends for the first four days of the holiday. Sounds like fun. What else do you do to celebrate? Wow. Now I, I need, I know how I'm going to get wealthy. I'm going to be buying some spring rolls. I did not know spring rolls make you wealthy. And I didn't know that eating noodles, long ones, would have me have long life. <laughs> All right, so practice in pairs here tonight. It says practice the conversation, uh, make a similar conversation, talk about the celebration that you know about. So they, they've given an example down here. So let's do the, the conversation. Uh, Edith, you be Jen, and Jorike, you be Neeling. Okay. okay. Mm. This food is great. I bought you some. There are two desserts you must try. You're right. They are delicious. They remind me of Chinese New Year. We eat a lot of good food then, too. Like, like what? Oh. Oh, yeah, that's me. That's me. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> so many, so many things. We eat a special dishes like noodles for long life, a spring roll for wealth, and oranges for luck. We also visit family and friends for the, for the first four days of the holiday. Sounds like fun. What else do you do to celebrate? Okay. So, uh, do you want to read? You be, you be uh, Meiling, I'll be... Jean, okay? No, you be Jen, I'm on, and then I'll be Malin. And talk loud so they can hear you. Can y'all hear him? Yes. Okay. Uh, mm, this one's great. I wrote you some. There are two cells you must try. Mm, you're right. They're delicious. They remind me of Chinese New Year. We eat a lot of good food then, too, my friend. Wait, is that, like what? Oh, wouldn't you like to know? So many things. We eat special dishes like noodles for long life, spring rolls for wealth, and oranges for luck. Man, we also visit family and friends for the first four days of this holiday. Those are fun. What else do you celebrate? Well, we celebrate a lot of things, but I'm not at liberty to discuss them tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's see if we can do a, uh, make a favorite, hot. my favorite holiday is, uh, so let's see, who's gonna speak back to me? Edith is gonna speak back because she's falling asleep in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to talk about a holiday. So my favorite holiday is uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, it takes place at the end of uh, November. Edith, what would you say to me afterwards? It's just conversation. Um, it's not a right or wrong answer. Um, what do you do to celebrate then, uh, Thanksgiving? <laughs> Thanksgiving? What do I do to celebrate Thanksgiving? Yes, what do, what do you do? What are... Well, we cook lots of food every year. Uh, we have all of our family come down uh, from all over. So we always have to go to dad's house because he's not going to none of our houses because he says he's the old person and we've got to go to him. Uh, but, but going to dad means you're going to get really good food because he cooks wonderful. Because none, mm. none of us children cook very well, not in comparison to that. He's tried to teach us how to make gravy, and let's just say 20 years of being taught how to make it, we still can't make gravy the way Dad does. <laughs> it, comes out, it comes out looking like uh, tar. 
and it doesn't taste very good either. What do you do? What do you do for Thanksgiving, Edith? Um, well, we cook a lot too because all my family and my husband family come over. So I mean do you, we cook. Uh huh. Do you really have your husband's family over? Well, not all of them. No, not like um, not no, like, that's right, uh, my, <laughs> yes, not my mother-in-law, <laughs> but my sister-in-law. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Enrique. Está vetada. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's nice to me. She's nice to me, but she don't live here. She lives in Mexico. Oh, yeah, but yeah, yeah, she's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of food do you cook? Um, well, we do well the turkey because you know it's the main thing, <laughs> and we cook some um maybe some tamales sometimes, rice. Mm, what else? Some other people bring something else. Maybe we make a dessert. Yeah. Okay, so you're not having to do all the cooking. No, not all the time. And when I do, my sister-in-law come and help me. She come okay, home. Because if I had to do all the cooking, it wouldn't be a very pleasant time when we all sat down to eat. Let somebody sit down <laughs> at that table and say, ooh, I don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, they never say that. Because, <laughs> I mean, my eyes would light up. I'd be like... Did you just say you don't like my cooking? Yeah. Are you stuck on stupid? Oh, no, get up out of this table and leave right now. I've been in there since 3 a.m. cooking, slamming over all this food, and you're going to say I don't like it? Don't even come back to this house. You're not even part of my family no more. That's right. When I talk to your parents, I'm going to disown them too. Okay, I'm just kidding. All right. So, Enrique, so do either one of y'all have anything y'all want to talk about tonight? Uh, do you have a favorite holiday that you want me to talk with you about? Um, New Year's Eve. New Why Year's do you Eve? like New Year's Eve so much? <laughs> well, I think it's, <laughs> yes, I think it's very traditional in the Latin community. Um, I don't know if you guys maybe disagree with me or not, but I mean, I think the most important for Latinos that's the uh, New Year's Eve, right? Mm. Yeah, well, I like New Year's Eve and, and Christmas Eve too, because you know, in Mexico, we celebrate Christmas Eve. Well, in Colombia, you know? we celebrate Christmas Eve as well, but the big party usually is, uh, is New Year's. I mean, it, it's not like you're here in the United States that they, they sometimes they don't even celebrate it. I mean, yeah, I remember that's right. that. You're right on that. What yeah. Are you talking about? <laughs> well, I know some people they don't even celebrate it. They go to bed like it's another day. Amen. Yeah. Then yeah. when it strikes midnight, it's a new year. Hallelujah. I'm still alive. I'm grateful. Praise to mm -hmm. Jesus. And then I'm going to sleep. Well, I, uh, you know, and, and I don't know, in Colombia, we celebrate big that. I mean, it's still my family there. They're still till six o'clock in the morning celebrating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Would Latin America, work, they, what do they usually do. the next day, though? No, there's a okay. holiday. Okay, so everything's closed. Okay, so you could pretty much stay up all night. Oh, yeah. Party mm -hmm. until you're sick. And then you sleep all day the next day. Okay. Yeah. Cool. yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like a very special, and uh, it used to be like, uh, I mean, people cry sometimes when it's a change in the year, at midnight and all that, but I don't know anymore, but uh, yeah, I, I remember when I was there, that was uh, very sentimental, you know, like, oh, the, the year is leaving and we're getting a new year and blah, 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 and yeah, it was kind of special. Very special. Enrique. Mm. Where from Colombia? Yes, sir. Wow. Well, what do you mean, wow? Uh, it's good, it's good. 
<laughs> what do you say? I'm sorry, I can't hear you well. Me gusta Colombia, aunque no lo conozco. Oh, okay. Bueno, gracias. So what did he say? What did you say, sir? What did you say? What did you say? I, I, I like, I like Colombia. I, I, I don't know. Why do you like Colombia? Uh, the culture. The culture. Um, I only know one person for Colombia, and he's been pretty ugly to me. <laughs> really? Who? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> El, Elmer, Elmer. <laughs> that, that is not true. Uh, That's a total lie. Ardila. <laughs> That's a total lie. Oh, I'm kidding. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I like Sabrina. You know Sabrina. I, I'm sorry. It's, it's a little bit difficult to hear you. Um, I know. He, he's so yeah. far away from the mic. He yeah. won't come close yeah. to me because it makes him uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Shakira. Shakira. Do y'all know who that is? Yes, of course. So is she like a famous singer? Yes. Yes. Do you know who is Shakira? I don't even know who that no. is. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Well, and, and do you guys remember, maybe I didn't share that the first night. I spent a lot of years in the Mennonite community, and so we did not have TV or radios or computers. Uh, a lot of Mennonites don't have electricity, so we live very simple. So I wouldn't, a lot of this stuff for 19 years, that's, where I, that's the way I live, so I don't really know. Although I'm pretty tech savvy today, I don't spend a lot of time going back in the past. So if I hear it, I'm like, wow, that's a powerful singer or somebody that would mean something to me. But you have to introduce those things to me or I would never know. Mm. Uh, there you go. I, I, I have a pretty old fashioned, pretty old fashioned background. Huh. That's why you see me always wearing long sleeve shirts that are either blue or green or white. Uh, they're always solid colors. You won't see anything with markings on it hmm. and almost always in black pants or khaki no uh, brown I, I won't wear khaki very much either i will wear um blue dark blue but not much other than that blue and black i'm old-fashioned you know, i would walk up and say he looks like a, a priest or something hmm <laughs> 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 oh mercy well my friends the time has expired we, we've had another uh, interesting evening um we will we, like always we will start back up next week so as always i need a motion to end the class who will give me that motion tonight who, who would do that edith has made the motion do we have a second mm -mm, no <laughs> Do we have anybody to second her motion in class tonight? Enrique? What do you say? I'm sorry. You, I need a second. So when we follow the what we call parliamentary procedure, you always have a, a motion to, to do things. So you always need two. So the, you get the first motion, and then you need someone to second it or approve it. So Edith has made it a motion to approve the end of class. So do we have a second? Okay. Enrique, Enrique would say, I second her motion. And then the chairperson, which would be the teacher tonight, would say, uh, having a first and a second, uh, do we have any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, manifest with the uplifted right hand. <laughs> so everybody raises their right hand. And then you look around, contrary, if there be any by the same sign, everybody's hands come down. And he would say, the vote is carried in the affirmative. The motion is passed. The meeting is adjourned. So, see, y'all will learn things from me before y'all get out of here. I appreciate you guys. Um, we're just a week or two away from fall break for the kiddos. I'm oh, my gosh. Excited.
don't tell nobody, but I'm wanting to take the little ones down to uh, Universal Studios <laughs> to Harry Potter World. <gasps> <laughs> so either way i i will see you guys lord willing next week okay okay go out and do good things for other people okay okay yeah All sure right. thank we you and hey, enrique we expect to see you next week yes yes um i'm sorry that was late today i may have to build i mean it depends on work is what i say so well, we know yeah. you're coming in late that's why we don't wait on you yes Thank you. That's good. Edith, she sits there. She's tapping the screen. She does this. <laughs> she doesn't do that. <laughs> all right. Y'all have a good evening. We'll Thank you. Have a nice weekend. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.